Hey, STAT students, and welcome to another video. This video, we're going to be talking about linear regression and the least squares line, okay? So before we talk too much about linear regression, let's remember what we've seen so far about correlation, okay? If you remember, correlation is the numerical measurement of the strength of a linear association between two variables, the explanatory variable and the response variable, okay? So what are some things that we know about correlation? Well, we know that uh, the sine of r, that's our correlation coefficient, the sine of r gives the direction of the association. So if you see that the general pattern of uh, points is going from down here to up here, that's a positive association, and so r would be positive. Whereas if they're going down like this, then it's going to be a negative association, and r would be negative. Okay? Uh, the second thing we know is that it's measuring the strength of the linear association, okay? So if, you're, if your points are not linear, all bets are off. Don't use correlation, it's really not appropriate. So it's the strength of the linear association between two variables, they have to be, they've got to be uh, quantitative variables. Don't try this with qualitative, you're just gonna hurt yourself. Uh, <clears throat> the further from zero, the stronger the linear association. If you remember when R was zero, we didn't have much of a linear association at all. When R is far from zero, uh, whether that's very negative or very positive, uh, we have a stronger and stronger association. The third thing we know is that it has no units, okay? Don't try to say that the correlation is 0.5 inches. No, 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 no. The correlation is just 0.5, all right? Uh, correlation is based on z-scores. If you remember the correlation of, uh, of two variables, it's, the, it's, one it's 1 divided by n minus 1 times the product, the sum of all the products of the z-scores, okay? So because it's based on z-scores, it's not going to be affected by changes in center or scale or by switching explanatory and response variables, okay? So what that means is if I were to change my units, for example, if I were to, to calculate the correlation first in inches and then say, no, no, I want to use feet instead, it's the same correlation, okay? Because they're going to have the same z-scores. Uh, if I first measured something in Celsius, then I said, no, I want to use Fahrenheit. It doesn't matter. Okay, the correlation is going to be unchanged. Uh, also, this is very uh, important. If I change my explanatory and response variables, so if, I, if my, my two axes, if I switch them like that, again, correlation is unchanged. Uh, and then finally, correlation is always between negative 1 and 1. Okay? What this means is if my correlation is negative 1, my data points are perfectly lined up, okay? I can draw a line that goes through every single data point, and the slope of that line is negative. Negative what? I don't know, but it's negative, okay? If the correlation of the, the line, if the correlation of the data is 1, positive 1, the exact same thing is true, it's just that this time we're headed up instead of down, okay? So that's our review of correlation. Now, let's get into linear regression. What is linear regression? Well, you got a scatter plot like this, and what linear regression is, it's putting something to a line, okay? We're gonna use a line to model the data. Now, this doesn't mean, the linear model simply means, I see that there is a pattern that goes from southwest to northeast, okay? that it's going from down here as x increases, y in general increases as well, okay? That does not mean that they all, don't, don't look at this and think to yourself, well, oh, they're not falling in a line. They're not supposed to fall in a line, okay? But what it shows us is, in general, things are increasing, and I don't see it bending up, okay, curving up or curving down. I don't see either of those, so it's really a fairly linear uh, uh, relationship here. <clears throat> now, uh, so what I want is I want a line that if I were to take my data and I were to break it into vertical bands like this, I want a line that's going to, as close as possible, go through the center of each of these vertical bands of data. All right? And uh, this is the line that does that. Uh, one line that we can come up with that we can calculate that does this extremely well is called the least squares regression line. Uh, I want to go back for a second and uh, look at this and talk about the word regression. Uh, 
This was first coined by a guy, Sir Francis Galton, uh, who is a, a British mathematician. He was, he was actually a British, he studied lots of different things. But he studied the heights of fathers and sons. And what he found was <clears throat> that generally tall fathers tend to have tall sons, and uh, tall sons tend to have tall fathers, which is not uh, unusual. It's not what we would, it's, that's ex exactly what we would expect to happen. But what he found was the tallest fathers, their sons were actually shorter than they were. And the shortest fathers, their sons were actually taller than they were. So when you get out to the extremes, the next generation regressed toward the mean, okay? It's not the, that the, the next generation didn't get more and more extreme. They regressed towards the center. And that's why we use the term regression. Uh, and if you think about it, that actually makes perfect sense that they would get closer to the center uh, because if not, then after several generations, we would have these incredibly tall people and these tiny little people like that, which would just be a very strange world to live in. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's move on. Let's, let's find out what we can about this least squares regression line. It's the line Y hat, okay? When we put a little hat on the Y, that means we're modeling, we're predicting, we're estimating, okay? Y hat equals B naught plus B one X. And so B naught is gonna be our Y intercept and B one is gonna be the slope of our regression line. And it's the particular line that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals, okay? What's a residual, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Here's a scatter plot, here's a line, and here are the residuals, okay? The residuals are the vertical distance from each point to the line that I've drawn, okay? So what this line does, you take all your, all your vertical distances, and uh, you'll notice that some are positive, some residuals are positive, those are the blue ones, some residuals are negative, if your point falls under the line, your residual is negative. You take all the residuals, you square them, sound kind of like the variance? You square these residuals and you sum them all up. This line gives you the smallest sum of the squared residuals. Now, why do we sum them up? I mean, actually not why do we sum them up. Why do we square them before we sum them up? It's really simple. If we were to just sum them up, the positive ones and the negative ones, they would cancel each other out and you could have really an infinite number of lines that would give you zero as your sum of residuals. So that, would, that wouldn't be very helpful at all. So the sum of the squared residuals, we actually end up with one unique line that we'll give that. Uh, so let's, let's find out some more about uh, uh, this unique line. Uh, here's our, uh, the residual is, like I said, the observed minus the predicted y minus y hat. And uh, here's the point x, y. Here's the point x, y hat. So that difference between y and y hat is this distance right there. Uh, as I said, the sum of the residuals is zero. This means that the mean of the residuals, also zero. Uh, and uh, the least squares regression line goes to the point x bar, y bar. If we think about this for a second, it actually makes perfect sense. This line is supposed to go through kind of the middle of our data and show the pattern of our data. It makes sense that it would go through the exact middle point of all the data. Now, I put a little cross here instead of a dot because X bar, Y bar is not necessarily a data point. It's just a location inside the data, okay? And so this, uh, uh, this location here, our least squares regression line always goes through that, uh, that, that spot. Uh, and then the slope of the least squares regression line. How do, you, how do you find a line with a point and a slope? We already found our point. Now the slope is, as it turns out, remarkably, our correlation coefficient times the standard deviation of the y data of your, uh, uh, your response variable divided by the standard deviation of our x data, our explanatory variable. Fairly simple, okay? Now, right now, I'm, uh, I'm not proving that it goes to the point x bar, y bar. I'm also not proving the slope of the line is this particular formula. I will prove that in the next video which is going to be much mathier than this video, okay? It's going to be quite mathy. So for you mathematicians, you'll love that one. All right, so there's our least squares regression line. It goes to the point x bar, y bar. It has this slope of correlation coefficient times standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x.
and it minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. So, one thing I wanted to show you was, if I were to take, here's the mean of my x data, here's the mean plus one standard deviation, and here's the mean minus one standard deviation. Here's the mean of my y data, here's the mean plus one standard deviation, here's the mean minus one standard deviation. If I were to take my data and put it on this grid there, and kind of redefine my, uh, my axes as being on this grid. Well, now uh, a standard deviation is going to be 1 in either direction. Now the slope of my line is actually going to be r. Okay? r is the slope of that line. So if you plot your z scores instead of plot plotting your regular data points and then look at the slope of that line, that's your correlation coefficient. Okay, so that way you don't have to uh, go through that long process of multiplying all the z-scores together and then summing them all up. And, uh, okay. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's move on. How to interpret? Okay, write this down, please. How do I interpret the slope of my least squares regression line? Okay, what I say is, for every increase of one, and then whatever my x unit happens to be, whatever my explanatory variable happens to be. Uh, earlier we, we were looking at the uh, SAT scores, and I believe the math SAT score was the explanatory variable. So I would say for every increase of one point in my math SAT score, in my math SAT score, that's the explanatory variable, we predict an increase of whatever the slope of the line was. I believe in that last one the slope of the line was 0.6. So I would, I would expect an increase of 0.6 uh, points, again, in my verbal SAT score, okay? That's how we interpret the uh, slope of the least squares regression line, okay? Now, how do you interpret R, the correlation coefficient? Really similarly, because remember, R is also the slope of a line. It's just the slope of the line that uh, uh, the least squares regression line for those z-scores. So for this one, for every increase of one standard deviation in my explanatory variable, in this case, my, uh, uh, my SAT scores, my math SAT scores. We predict an increase of, I believe R in that last example was 0.5. So we predict an increase of 0.5 standard deviations in my verbal SAT scores, okay? That's what those things mean to us. All right, now, next thing I wanna talk about are residuals, okay? Uh, we talked about what residuals are. It's the vertical distance from each point to the, uh, to the line. Well, sometimes you can look at residual plots and they'll tell you some information that you don't see from just looking at the regular scatter plot. Uh, here's a residual plot down here. And you'll notice every point on the scatter plot corresponds to a point on the residual plot. Okay? Uh, this distance from the line to this point is this distance right here from this horizontal line to this point. This distance, this negative distance, is this distance. This distance is this distance, and so on and so on, okay? So it's kind of like we just took this line and we kind of flattened it out and put it right here, but we preserved all of these distances here. Now, what you want in a residual plot is chaos, okay? This is good, because as I look at this, I don't see a pattern anywhere. And what that tells me is a linear model is really good for this particular data set. Okay? The, residual, the, the residuals plot is used to tell the appropriateness of the linear model. Okay? So if you have uh, a scatter plot like this where your residuals are negative, they're mainly negative, and now they're mainly positive, and now they're mainly negative again, okay? You can see a little up and then down there. Well, that's a pattern. Not good, okay? You can see that pattern here as well. It's below the line, it's going above the line, it's going below the line again. So you can see that it's kind of going like this and maybe turning a corner and heading down. Well, what that means is we should not be using a linear model here, okay? we should be using some other kind of model. What kind of model? We'll get to that later, all right? But for right now, we would just look at that and say, I don't think this is appropriate. I don't think that this data actually follow a linear pattern. Uh, here's another one where, uh, this, is, this one's kind of on the line here, but uh, um, 
But again, by looking at the residuals plot, you can see positive residuals, and then it gets negative, stays negative for a while, and then, and then it pops up to very positive right there. And so mainly, what, what that makes me think is, you know, this might be two different populations here. This data over here might be more linear heading down like this, and then maybe something happens when my explanatory variable hits 12. Something explodes, okay? And all of a sudden it becomes way less predictable. So again, our, uh, you can see it in the scatter plot, but the residuals help you see it a little more clearly. Uh, here's a really good example of that. I would look at this scatter plot and I would say, oh baby, this is great. This is really, really linear data. Until I look at the residuals plot and I go, whoa, sine curve or something kind of like a sine curve. What the heck is going on there? So this is one where the residuals plot really shows me that yes, there is certainly a pattern to the residuals. Therefore, this is not a linear data set. This is something that looks really close to a linear data set, but there's a better model out there. Okay? There's a better model that we could come up with that would model this data more closely than, uh, than the linear model, even though I guarantee you that R would be very, very close to 1 just from looking at that scatter plot. Okay? And uh, here is here's a nice one again. Okay? This is also extremely linear data here, and then when we look at the residuals plot, we see absolutely no pattern at all. Therefore, we're really, really happy because that means, yeah, it's appropriate to use the linear model here. Now, what if I want to get some sort of idea of uh, how big my residuals are? Uh, well, I guess I could take the, the mean of the residuals, but the problem with that is that the mean is always zero. So it doesn't really tell me anything. So instead of looking at the mean, what I look at are the standard deviation and the variance of the residuals. All right? Uh, which we call SE and SE squared. In case you're wondering why is it SE and not SR because we're talking about residuals, every once in a while you'll see the word E in there because every once in a while the word error will be used instead of residuals because this is seen as an error. Uh, I tried to predict that it would be there and instead it was over here and so it's a slight error. Uh, it's just how it is, okay? So SE is the standard deviation of the residuals and SE squared is the variance of the residuals. And uh, that's, we'll, we'll use that a lot to just get an idea of how, how well, how big the residuals are. In this case, uh, SE and SE squared would be extremely small because this data looks very nice and linear. All right? Now, uh, one more thing I want to talk about with, uh, with residuals, and that is, look at these two. Uh, this is the same scatter plot. But the lines are very, very different. Okay? Here's my least squared regression line. And this is just a line, it's a horizontal line that goes through, it's, it's y equals y bar. Okay? It's just the mean of our y data. And as you can see, the residuals that I get here are way bigger than the residuals that I get here. Right? Now, how do we measure the magnitude of residuals? Like I said, we use the variance or the standard deviation. So let's, let's use the variance right now. Uh, how would I measure the variance of uh, these residuals? Well, it's the variance. It's the variance of uh, my y data. Okay? It's just s squared for y. If you remember, we take y minus y bar. We square that for each data point. We sum all them up. And then we divide by uh, uh, n minus 1 because this is we're thinking this is a sample, not an entire population. All right. How do you calculate uh, the, the standard or the, the variance of the, the residuals? Pretty much the exact same way. The only difference is I'm going to use y i minus y hat i. Okay. I'm going to use these differences here instead of these big old differences here. And again, I'm going to take the difference. I'm going to square it. I'm going to sum them all up, and I'm going to divide by uh, n minus one. Now, which one's bigger, this one or this one? I really hope your answer is this one over here is definitely going to be bigger. Why? Because of the magnitude of the residuals. You can see that they're just much, much bigger. So one thing that we can do to try to see how linear our data are is compare this to this. Okay? 
and in particular see how how much better, how much smaller did my variance get when I moved from this line to this line. And in particular, look at how much smaller as a percentage of this thing right here. So basically what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to divide it by this. The smaller that is, the smaller that, that ratio is, the more linear my data are going to be because the smaller the residuals are going to be. Okay? Whereas the closer this is to 1, the closer these residuals are going to look like this. Okay? And actually, the flatter this line is going to be. Magically, as it turns out, this ratio turns out to be 1 minus the square of our correlation coefficient. Uh, I'm not going to prove that to you right now, but I will in the next video. Okay? I definitely will in the next video. So, uh, how to interpret R squared? This is what we do. We say R squared, and then we generally, uh, we generally uh, um, express it as a percent. R squared percent of the variation in the response variable, my Ys, can be explained by the variation in my explanatory variable, the, uh, the variation in my Xs. Or, sometimes, instead of uh, this part here, I'll just say, it can be explained by the model, okay? But that's that's what R squared tells us. It tells us the the, the percentage of the variance that we can uh, associate to this other variable, okay? So that way, if I were to look at all these uh, these uh, verbal SAT scores and say, oh my God, they're just all over the place. They're really really varied. Why why is this? Somebody might come over and say, oh well, actually, there's a correlation with the math SAT scores. And if you look at that correlation, it's actually easy to predict a lot of the variance of the Y SAT scores. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Okay? Uh, as it turns out, in this case, R squared would be about 25%. So I could predict 25% of my variation. The other 75%? I don't know. It's something else. I'd have, to, I'd have to go find some other variable and see what's going on. Okay? So, next video, like I said, the math behind linear regression. Particularly, what are we going to look at? We're going to ask these questions. How do I know that R is between negative 1 and 1? Okay? These are things that I've told you, but I haven't proven. Also, how do I know the least squared line is going through this point x bar, y bar? Also, how do I know that the slope of the least squared line is uh, the correlation coefficient times the ratio of the standard deviations? How do I know that? We'll prove that. And then lastly, how do I know that the ratio of the, uh, uh, the variance of my residuals divided by the variance of my y data equals 1 minus r squared. Again, we'll look at that and we'll prove it. Okay? It's going to be great. I'll see you then.